Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church. It's wonderful to have you all here among us this morning as we join together in the worship of our Holy Lord. This morning, our order of service is based around the service of prayer and preaching. Uh, you can follow along with our service up on your screens this morning, along with all of our hymns, readings, and responses. You can find the hymns in your hymnal based on the page number that's presented on the screen as well. And so as we begin our worship this morning, we turn to hymn number 531 and sing together, Hail, Thou Once Despised Jesus. God's blessings to you all in your worship this morning. Please rise. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. 
Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Please be seated for our next hymn. Our Old Testament reading for this morning comes to us from the prophet Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. The Lord speaks through his prophet Jeremiah here as he talks to the shepherds of Israel, those who have led the people spiritually and how they have abused the people and how they've mistreated them and not led them correctly. The Lord promises to punish those who have shirked their duties and he promises to raise up a shepherd, the one who will come, Jesus Christ. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who care for my people, you have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil deeds, declares the Lord. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed. Neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. 
And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes to us today from the, second, or the, the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesian church, the second chapter. An issue that is going on in first century is that the, the, those who were born into the Jewish faith and those who are born not Jewish or Gentile weren't sure whether the other group could be saved by Christ. And so as they fought about this and they divided themselves along this line, Paul here is reminding them they are not separated by their differences, but they are united in having the grace and forgiveness of Christ. St. Paul writes, Remember that at one time, you Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as we hear from the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. St. Mark recalls for us the feeding of the 5,000. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. 
Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Let us join together and speak our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, and I'd like to invite forward any children who'd like to come up for a children's message. Come on up. Come and take a seat. I am so excited to see you all here. Morning. morning, morning. Well, did you hear about when we're reading in the gospel, Jesus did a miracle. Now, a miracle is something that we can't explain just by uh, something that happened naturally, but Jesus did something fantastic that none of us can do. Did you hear about what was it? Exactly, exactly. He fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. Now, giant loaves of bread, and that's how he fed 5,000 people. Do you think that's how he did it? Yeah. No. Uh, they were giant fish, like, like whales. Do you think they were like that? Yeah. No, no, they weren't like that. So if they weren't giant pieces of bread and giant fish, how in the world was Jesus able to feed more than 5,000 people with just a few bits of food? What do you think, Zoe? Because he's God, right? Yeah. And God can do miraculous things. God can do things that we can't do. It's not like he was a really good cook and he could just whip up a whole bunch of bread all of a sudden or, or go out into the, the sea and pull in hundreds and thousands of fish. But he did it to show that he's God. And he has power over, over everything in this world, even the loaves of bread and the fish. Do you think that... Our Lord Jesus, because he's God and he can do such a miraculous thing as turn Bible into a feast for everyone. God's always going to be with you and there's nothing that can stop God. That we, we, Jesus, he's God and he cares about you because he's God and he will always love you and always take care of you. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads and let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for feeding more than 5,000 people. Thank you for being God for us and caring for us each and every day of our lives. Help us to trust in you all the time. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much for coming up this morning. You may head back to your seats. And as our young people do that, we sing hymn number 644. 
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ seems to have a knack for putting himself in situations, along with all of his followers, that make his disciples question Jesus' ability to plan ahead. When Jesus and his disciples are crossing the Sea of Galilee and a great storm arises and rocks their boat to the point of them worrying about being capsized, what do they say? Where's the Lord? He's asleep. Lord, don't you care that we are perishing? Or when they get news that Lazarus was nearing death because of an illness, Jesus delayed going to meet him for a couple of days. And when he does arrive, what do Mary and Martha say to Jesus? Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Or right after that, as Jesus tells his disciples, we need to go to Jerusalem they look at him puzzled and say, but don't you know they're trying to kill you there? We have hindsight to these situations, don't we? We can see what Jesus is doing. We know that it's not that he doesn't have the ability to plan. In fact, he is planning. He's showing his true nature, his true identity. As the disciples question whether Jesus cares about them or not, he calms the storm, showing his mastery over the powers of creation. When they had wondered why Jesus didn't show up to heal their friend Lazarus and brother Lazarus, what did he do? He raised Lazarus from the dead to show his mastery even over the power of death. Or when the disciples wondered why would Jesus go to where they're trying to kill him, that's exactly where he was going to do. To die on the cross for the sins of all humanity. And who's the only one who can calm a storm, raise the dead, and bear the burden of the sins of all people? God himself. Jesus may seem like he has poor planning, but he knows exactly what he's doing. And as our gospel reading for today unfolds, we see what might be the beginning once again of this poor planning that the disciples think about. I want you to pay attention to some specific words in our text for this morning. The first word I want you to pay attention to is the word desolate. Because Jesus, as he talks to his disciples, he wants them to go to a desolate place. He says, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. That word desolate means empty. It means devoid of life. You could go as far to say bleak or hopeless. That's where Jesus brings the disciples. And who follows them to this desolate, bleak, lifeless place? But the crowds, of course they will. Can't you see that coming, Jesus? You're going to take us out to a desolate place? And after Jesus had taught the people, the disciples say to Jesus, this is a desolate place. And our hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. If you were an event planner and you had a, uh, a gathering of more than 5,000 people and, and you decided, hey, let's go to a lifeless, dead, empty place without food, water, facilities, or air conditioning, that would probably be the last job you get. No one's going to want you to plan their events because that's some pretty poor planning. And the disciples seem to have that same attitude. And so Jesus says, well, then you give them something to eat. Again, bewildered by this because they say, shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? Well, in case you don't automatically have the currency exchange in your head, 200 denarii is roughly about one half to two thirds of a year's salary. So a significant amount of money they're estimating here. You can practically hear their confusion and say, Jesus, don't you get it? 
Look at all these people here. You brought us out in the middle of nowhere where it's dead, lifeless, and there's nothing to eat, there's nothing to get, there's nothing to do, and you expect us to find bread for all these people? But this is what happens. How many loaves do you have? Go and see, says Jesus. And when they had found out, they said five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. Here's another word I want you to pay attention to. Practically the opposite word to desolate, the word green. Now we think of it as a color, surely, but have you noticed this year with the rains we've been having, I've heard a lot of people say they haven't seen their lawns so green in practically decades. Because what does green grass mean? Green grass means life. Green grass means vitality. Green grass is where lush and, and, and good things are happening. So right here, Jesus in a desolate, lifeless, bleak, and hopeless place finds lush life. And as they sat down, Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish and looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were 5,000 men. Jesus, in a desolate, lifeless place, brings them to life and gives them more than they need. What appeared to be poor planning on Jesus' part was actually him showing what it is he can do. That in the bleak, hopeless places of life, he brings true and abundant life. Do you notice that over 5,000 people, it just counts the men here, but it didn't include women and children. So we could have even more than triple that amount. They were all fed and were satisfied. They didn't just get crumbs. And at the end of the day, they ended with more than what they started with. So the Lord comes to us in our desolate places, in our moments of hopelessness, in our anxiety, in our trouble, in our heartache, and in our tears, and he provides to us abundant life, more than we need. Now, the, as Jesus does this miracle, this is not a guarantee that if we pray hard enough, bread will show up at our table. And it's not that we will always receive the blessings we want in the moment we want them. But it shows us ultimately that in the desolate places that we find ourselves in, in the valleys of the shadow of death, we have no fear of evil. Because the Lord can provide life even where we see only death and destruction and desolation. And he can do that because he has taken our desolation on himself. Jesus, as he goes to the cross, the place of the skull, the place of death, the place of desolation, he receives our death and in turn gives us his life. He gives us his life, not because we deserve it, not because we can earn it, not because we are good enough people, not because we are righteous, but he gives it to us because he is righteous, he is God, he can feed us abundantly more than we could ever need, and that is the picture of God's grace, God's forgiveness, God's love that showers on you even in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death, even in the place of desolation. That Jesus brings you his life, makes you his people, and by the blood of Christ saves you 
And so he calls us just as he called these people here to sit and to listen to him. To not pay attention to the desolation around them. Don't look at that and say, well, that's where I am. I am in death. I am in sadness. I am in anxiety and worry and trouble. He says, look to me where true life can be found because I've taken your desolation. I've taken your death. I've taken your brokenness and I've made it my own and you have my life. He provides life in the midst of death. He provides grace in the midst of desolation. He takes the death that we deserve because of our sins and gives us abundantly of himself, more than we could ever need. And so my brothers and sisters in Christ, let us hear Jesus Christ. Let us not look to the moments of desolation, but look to the cross and know that because he suffered for us, we have life, and have it to the full. Amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Just a quick note that uh, we do have our offering plates at the back of the, of the sanctuary and in the narthex. Please note that they are also labeled. So if you have your Trinity offering, put it in the Trinity plates. And if you have the St. Paul's offering, the St. Paul's plates. And here at St. Paul's, we do also have online giving you can find on our website. We continue with the prayer of the church. Please rise. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, for your compassion shown in Christ Jesus the great shepherd of the sheep, and the righteous son of David. Keep us trusting at all times in your right hand in whom true satisfaction is found. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God of Israel, you promised to set caring shepherds over the sheep of your pasture. Drive away deceitful shepherds who scatter your flock and gather your sheep into your heavenly kingdom by the hands of faithful pastors whom you send in your name. Bless the efforts of missionaries all over our world, but we especially pray for James Sharp, Carl Hansen, and Pedro Lopez. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' compassion for the crowd, he provided bread and fish until all had eaten their fill and were satisfied. Give us our daily bread according to your will. Help us to use the gifts that you have given us to care for those who are hungry and in need. Give your constant care and deliverance to all those still suffering from the recent floods and guide and bless Trinity Haywarden as they seek restoration and renewal. Provide for them abundantly as they look forward to the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly King, you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us good government and faithful rulers while reminding us always that all provision comes from you. Grant your peace and protection on all who serve in the armed forces, as well as those who provide for our safety locally by serving in emergency response, law enforcement, and firefighting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, for your constant care and all we need to support this body and life. Attend to those in need among us, especially Vivian Johnson, Jerry Vlodo, Dwayne Bonema, Tim Vandenberg, John Vanderfeen, Jesse West, Todd Dagan, Kayla Turing, Shelley Moon, Dennis and Barb Deline, Shirley Tenaple, and Kylan Linet. Free them from dismay and fear by the certainty that Christ is their righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you, O Lord, that you have made us fellow citizens in the saints in light. Keep us in the true faith for as long as you preserve us in this world, that we would hopefully and eagerly await the day when we stand in your presence with them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, Still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. 
Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all doings and life may please you. To your hands I commend Self, my body and soul and all things. Holy angel be with me, that the evil are over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. Please be seated. Good morning. Once again, welcome to St. Paul's. It's wonderful to have you with us. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, a few announcements. After uh, service today, everyone is invited to come on downstairs for fellowship time. Uh, after fellowship time, we are going to be having our council meeting today. So if you're on church council, please stick around for that. We're going to have that up in the, in the meeting room in the education wing. Um, let's see. Also, uh, need people to continue to sign up for fellowship times uh, for the serving of the coffee and the and the treats and things like that back there. We also have a sign-up sheet for the VBS snacks uh, to provide food for VBS. It's coming up very quickly. 
Also, if you uh, have a bulletin, uh, Trinity members, if you have kids uh, who you would like to uh, come to our VBS, we usually have uh, space for them. Uh, so if you sign up your kids for VBS, uh, there's instructions in the, in the bulletin for that. Uh, we also have our services on, uh, on Wednesday evenings at 6.30, which we'll have again this upcoming Wednesday. So if you're going to be gone next Sunday, that service will serve as the service for next Sunday. So uh, please feel free to come this Wednesday at 6.30. All right, and then we have Bible study Thursday mornings at 10 a.m. Are there any other announcements that need to be made today? Okay, great. Well, thank you to Pastor Lowe for sharing his musical gifts with us once again today. And God's blessings to you all and have a great week in the Lord.